Welcome back for another weather glance video. In today's forecast, we're going to be going over a series of multiple severe weather events that we'll be going over throughout the next four days, all coming up in just a bit. All right, now in our first slide, we're going to take a look at the 2 meter AGL temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. And here, this is going to be showing you your surface temperatures. So what we're going to be taking a look at first is how this cold air from the mountainous regions in the northwestern United States is going to be evicting down into the southeastern United States. So this is going to be headed into the central and southeastern United States, and this is going to converge with that warm, moist air that is in the southeastern United States. Now, when this happens, this is going to cause very un a very unstable atmosphere with very large lapse rates. So what this means is there's going to be a great temperature difference in the atmosphere with a short length. So this means for every 100 feet that you go up in the atmosphere, we could see maybe 5 degrees, maybe 10 degrees change in degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but right now, as you can see, we have a very strong cold front moving through into Tornado Alley, into the Tornado Alley region. And this is going to be uh, continuing over throughout the next four days. And we're going to see multiple systems with low pressure systems that are going to be bringing this cold air down and converging with this warm, moist air with these large dew points uh, that are high up into the 70s and 80s. And this is going to be causing a very unstable atmosphere that we will be have to be following up with within the next couple of days. All right, and on our second slide, we're going to be taking a look at the 2 meter AGL dew point in degrees Fahrenheit. And this is going to be showing you basically what the moisture level is. So um, this is going to be showing you when dew when dew forms and that's going to be the point the temperature that dew forms. So the higher the dew points, the more warm moist air is in the atmosphere. So as you can see, we are going to be expecting these very warm, moist conditions throughout the next couple of days, including tomorrow, October 10th, moving into Tuesday, October 12th. And as you can see, uh, this is going to be creating a very strong atmosphere condition that are going to be unstable. So uh, here we have 70 and 80 degree dew points and even up into the Ohio Valley, we see up to those 70 degree dew points. So uh, that is going to be creating a very unstable condition throughout much of the atmosphere in the eastern half of the United States, all the way up into Wisconsin and Minnesota, which we are going to be getting to uh, later tonight and throughout much of the rest of the four days that we are going to be covering the severe weather, we will have some severe conditions up in this region as well. But the main severe weather conditions are going to be in the southeastern Oklahoma area in the northeastern Texas area, including south central Oklahoma and north central Texas. So here, this is going to be creating very strong unstable atmosphere conditions as this cold front passes through. And uh, this is going to be creating a very unstable atmosphere leading up to everything else and all the other conditions that are matching so perfectly. All right, now on our next slide, we're going to take a look at the most unstable cape in joules per kilogram. So this is going to be showing you throughout the entire atmosphere, we are going to be looking at where the most unstable energy is. So uh, this is kinetic energy, and this is going to be measuring how much potential energy we have in the atmosphere. And as you can see, all of this energy evacs up from the Gulf into Tornado Alley, into the Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas area. And this is going to be uh, a couple of factors put together. This is going to be temperature difference and moisture and humidity. So this is measuring all those factors together and basically putting it into kind of a measurable amount of energy that we can use. Now, when we get up into those 2000s and 3000s, that's where our main severe weather starts to form and as you can see tomorrow evening uh, October 10th we're going to see some severe weather move into the Oklahoma area with large hail damaging winds and probably about several tornadoes throughout tomorrow within the region and this is going to be caused by these conditions moving through we are going to get into the shear factor in here within the next couple of slides but right now we're taking a look at this energy factor and we have a very wide spread area of energy here of kinetic potential energy here and as you can see this also moves up into Wisconsin and areas like that as well so throughout this entire region even into Ohio and Indiana and Illinois we're going to be seeing that energy as well so we're going to have a lot of energy throughout the eastern half of the United States especially in Tornado Alley and that's going to be feeling these storm systems that come through all right on our next slide we're taking a look at the bulk shear at the surface 500 millibars so this is surface to 500 millibars in the atmosphere um, and that's about mid-level in the atmosphere so uh, this is going to be showing you how much spin basically there is in the atmosphere, the difference in wind speeds and directions. And as you can see, this surface trough comes down through the atmosphere from this low pressure system. And we see a very strong low pressure system come through. It's going to be moving through Oklahoma and areas like that. And it's going to be bending the jet stream. So not only is it going to be bending the jet stream, but there's going to be a very strong bit of shear here. So these colors, this is not showing you the wind speeds in the atmosphere. This is showing you how much shear there is in the atmosphere. And the more shear there is in the atmosphere, the stronger the storms can be and the more spin the storms can have so here with these uh purples and pinks so with this with these reds 
purples and pinks uh, that's where you're going to want to be paying attention because these areas right here are going to have a very strong amount of spin now for Arizona and areas like that we're not going to have very much concern because there's not a lot of moisture there to feel these storms but when we get into these areas with a lot of moisture that's where you're going to have to pay attention because that's where we see a lot of this energy that's going to be feeling these storms so in areas like Oklahoma and Texas where, where we see that severe weather potential for tomorrow that's going to be feeling these storms and when those storm towers build up they're going to get spun by that shear so the cold front is going to be coming down and moving eastward so th this is going to be moving eastward the cold front but the wind is going to be taking it up northeastward so we have that spin here as you can see we have that spin with diverging wind speeds and that's going to be feeling these supercellular thunderstorms tomorrow that are going to be embedded within the squall line and that's going to put create some potential tornado damage as well as those heavy lapse rates that we were talking about with the temperature difference that's going to be creating cold atmosphere conditions relatively low to the surface so that means that hail development can prolong and eventually with those strong updrafts once they can't handle that hail anymore that's going to fall to the earth and create some very damaging hail conditions as well in some of the areas forecasted. All right, in our next slide, we're going to be taking a look at the 200 millibar height and wind in knots. So this is going to be showing you basically the jet stream. We're looking at the upper level jet stream here, and this is really what drags these low pressure systems down. So we are going to see our low pressure system come down uh, with this jet stream, and this is going to be over Texas and Oklahoma. And what that's going to do is this is going to uh, drag this low pressure system down. As we can see right here, it's looking right over Kansas and northern Oklahoma. And this trouping motion is going to drag those wind speeds, uh, those upper level wind speeds, that column of air. Uh, and that's going to be bending it like this. So when we see that cold front come through and it's going to be pushing eastward. So we have something like this. We see the wind speeds going up like this, uh, back up into Illinois and areas like that. And then we have our... our cold front moving through with the storm so the storm is going to be the cold front that's going to push the storms this way once they got get caught up with this motion upward that's going to create that spin so that's why i'm showing you this 200 millibar level wind uh for the jet stream because this goes co along with our shear and this is going to be uh showing you what this goes hand in hand with that shear and this is going to be showing you what kind of conditions we have here uh that tomorrow and throughout the rest of the week as well but this strong trout that we see tomorrow is going to be the main severe weather event that we're going to have to look out for so if you do live in uh south central oklahoma southeastern oklahoma northeastern texas and northeast or north central texas you're going to have to look out for tomorrow and have a no weather radio handy uh keep a live stream or a news live stream ready and make sure that you are prepared throughout the evening and nighttime hours as those storms can get pretty violent throughout the evening all right now we're taking a look at everything put together basically every one wants to know where these storms going to be so this is the composite reflectivity this basically shows you how heavy the precipitation is we're all used to seeing this on radar but this is putting it into a forecast model and this is going to show you where those storms are going to be so starting off we're just starting off and this is about saturday today and we're moving into sunday tomorrow and as you can see we start to see that squall line move through and that develops over here into oklahoma and areas like that and it's going to be a very strong cold front um not really shown here on the nam forecast model but uh it's going to be a very strong cold front that's going to be pushing these storms through together and it's going to be in a very strong linear motion meaning it's going to be in a very sharp line so it's going to be almost perfectly linear when it's coming through as you can see there's that straight line that comes through and then of course the storms are going to move east northeastward with that storm uh, system the low pressure system and that's going to be causing that shear in the atmosphere as those storms move in different directions the wind speeds in the atmosphere and that's ultimately going to be feeling the multi-day storm event so we have this one low pressure system that seems to be causing a lot of trouble throughout here so it's going to start off in the southeastern united states then it's going to move up into wisconsin and michigan and it's going to be dragging a cold front through also missouri and illinois um, but not only that we see for tuesday we see another low pressure system similar to the one that we're seeing today only it's going to be more of an event out here in western Oklahoma and western Texas so that's going to be more in this region over here so that's somewhere we're going to have to look out for on Tuesday as well all right now we're getting into the National Weather Service the official National Weather Service outlook so these are the officials here um, they definitely know what they're doing and this is their outlook and take on things so today for this evening we see this slight risk here so the slight risk of severe weather um, that's going to be coming through Wisconsin or Minnesota and South Dakota and even some portions of North Dakota as well so uh, 
what the main threat with this system is that there's going to be some tornadic activity possible. So like I was saying, we do have this potential area here as well. Even all the way into the green marginal risk, we definitely see that effect as well. All right, now moving on to our next slide, we're taking a look at the same day for today uh, with that slight risk. Only now we're starting to take a look at that green risk here in this brown risk. Now what this is, this is the tornado outlook. So uh, this means the percentage of a tornado occurring within a 25 mile given location. So that 25 mile given location, let's just say that's you. Within this location, that means that you have a 2% chance of a tornado occurring within 25 miles of your specific location. So that means within you, there's a 2% chance of a tornado occurring within 25 miles of you. So as we get into the stronger outlook here, this is the more advanced outlook uh, and the more advanced percentage. And this is where we start to see those tornadoes. So a lot of times I tell people that we have a 5% chance of tornadoes occurring within 25 mile given location. And they don't really think that's a big deal. But within this widespread area, we have a good like probably 1000 square miles here. Um, there's likely, there's bound to be a tornado somewhere within this 5% region. Now, that's not always the case, but usually we do see about one funnel cloud within the system. So if you live in this region, you definitely want to be careful this evening because you definitely could see the potential for a tornadic system to come through. Not always, but definitely there's that chance with this system. All right, now the moment that most people have been waiting for, we see this rare risk that we're going to see tomorrow. Now, the reason I say rare is this is not usually the case for fall type storms. We definitely do see enhanced risks in the fall, but as late as mid-October, early to mid-October that we are in right now, um, we really do not see this type of risk right now. So our main concern, of course, is the enhanced risk here. And as I drew this out for you on our other forecast maps provided by Pivotal Weather, you can see here that this is going to be the main region that you need to look out for. So if you live in this region here, uh, you're going to have that system coming down, as we saw before, that low pressure system that's going to be up here in Oklahoma. And uh, this is going to be dragging that cold front down and bringing those storms through. And they're going to be likely severe here. So as this low pressure system moves up here through Missouri, we're going to see uh, those diverging wind speeds from the trial so we're going to have our jet stream moving down like this and moving upward and once that cold front moves through with this with these wind speeds it's going to mix over this region in this enhanced risk region and that's going to be creating that sheer like event and with this a enormous amount of energy that's here with that enormous amount of moisture and cold air to behind it so we have cold dry air this is going to be creating a very unstable atmospheric condition and all that we needed left was the was the sheer atmospheric conditions and once those came together we have ourselves a tornado event so as we move into our next slide we're going to be taking a look at the tornado probabilities as we just did with the last slide uh but for this is this is tomorrow and this is the big one that we have all been waiting for all right, and as you can see on this slide, we first start off with our 2% region. So this is a widespread 2% region. This means that if you live in this area, there is a 2% chance of a tornado occurring within 25 miles of you. So within this region, with how widespread it is, there likely will be one or two funnel clouds occurring within this green region, simply because of how wide it is. We see this giant, probably about... Um, 5,000 square mile region uh, because of, you know, square miles. So this is five, likely 5,000 square miles. And we see this giant area for, uh, for, the, for this playground for storms. And we definitely see the potential there for there to be a couple, uh, one or two tornadoes within that region tomorrow. All right, and in our next region, we're taking a look at that 5% region. So the same one for today, but tomorrow, there is a widespread 5% region here. And that means that there will likely be a few tornadoes within this region because that's... So let's say you live in this region here, this 5% region here, this brown region. That means that there could be a tornado within 25 miles of you. That's a 5% chance of a tornado being within 25 miles of you. So again, that is a very good chance. Um, despite the low percentage, that is a very good chance because this scale, if you look at the at the bottom of the screen here, on um, the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, it only goes up to 60%. And then, of course, there's the significant hatched risk for that to happen. But um, there, it only goes up to 60%. So here we are in the 5% region here. And this is quite a large scale. Despite the low percentage, this is quite a large scale. Now, when we move into our next region here, which is the 10% region, this is where things get a little more iffy because this only happens maybe about 20 to 30 times 
per year. So uh, definitely more of a rare event here, and we definitely are going to expect tornadoes here. There are definitely going to be tornadoes somewhere within this region. Now, where that's going to be, we don't know. So if you live in this 10% region, you need to be prepared for tomorrow because this is going to be quite a severe weather event, a widespread event at that. Uh, something that I failed to mention is that tomorrow as well, we also see that 2% region up here as well for uh, northern northeastern Minnesota and some parts of Wisconsin and Michigan as well, the Michigan Panhandle. Uh, uh, but here, as you can see, um, we have a very widespread 2% region here. And this area you're going to have to watch out for because 10%, that means that there is a 10% chance of a tornado occurring within 25 miles of you. So with, again, this is probably like 1,000 square miles of playground for the 10% region for these storms. And um, we definitely have very favorable conditions within this region. So if you live in this 10% region, this is the area that you're going to be wanting to look out for. Um, something to note is that a couple weeks ago, we had a 5% chance for the Pittsburgh area in Pennsylvania. And we actually had one of our um, rare tornado outbreaks from a 5% chance. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be a tornado outbreak tomorrow, but we actually, the National Weather Service confirmed that it was an outbreak. Wasn't a it wasn't a huge outbreak, but it definitely was an outbreak. So with that being said, with a 10% region, there is always that chance that it could be dubbed an outbreak uh, just by the scale of this event. So make sure that you are prepared for tomorrow because this isn't something that's more of a tiny event. This is more playing with the big stuff and you need to be prepared for tomorrow. All right, now we start to get more farther out in our long range forecast. And this is for day three. So um, this is going to be um, for about... Monday. So this is our Monday outlook. And here you can see we have a giant widespread slight risk region stretching from uh, Michigan all the way down to Missouri, Illinois, and Kentucky. Uh, northwestern Kentucky, that is. And then we move back through Michigan. So we have this giant widespread region. Now, with this outlook, we don't have any tornado or hail information yet. We just have the probabilistic outlook, and we're not going to show that. Um, but here you can see that we definitely do have a slight risk here. So th there probably likely will be a chance for tornadoes within this. According to the forecast models that we see, there is going to be a slight chance of tornadoes within this region. And I bet we could narrow this down to an enhanced risk as well if conditions do get as high. I kind of doubt that their conditions will be that high since we don't have enough convective available potential energy, that kinetic energy that we need to form these storms. But um, we we definitely will have a good bit of shear over this portion of the atmosphere with that low pressure system, the same one that's going to be down in Oklahoma tomorrow that's going to be moving up through these regions as well. And that could provide a bit of severe weather through this region. Now, this is the very long range forecast that this is as far as it goes out. We actually have another day four severe weather outlook. Now, this is our 15% chance of um, severe weather occurring within your region now this if you ever see an outlook for day four because the the tornado outbreak that i do have to mention that happened in pennsylvania a couple weeks ago um that was actually issues it as a 15 percent risk so when you see these 15 percent risks on on day four through eight that already shows that something is going to happen so you need this goes this either goes from 15 to 30 percent this doesn't go any higher than that so with this risk um again i'm not trying to strike fear into anybody but i'm trying to strike caution you need to realize what kind of stuff this is this isn't something like a little slight risk this is something that you're going to be wanting to pay attention to I do have to mention that this enhanced risk that we're dealing with tomorrow was in fact a 15% chance. Uh, it was between a 15% and a 30% chance of severe weather occurring on this day four to day eight outlook. Uh, just only a few days ago. So uh, this could easily turn into an event similar to the one that we're going to have tomorrow. So you need to be paying attention uh, to this as well, which we will be covering more into this if it gets any worse. But as far as right now, there's not really too much. This is for Tuesday, and I really don't believe that too much will occur with this one. All right, I want to thank you all so much for watching today's video. A big thanks to today's sources, Pivotal Weather, where all the forecast models seen in today's video came from, and the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center page, where all those outlooks came from. I would ask you to consider subscribing subscribing for more U.S. forecasts free of charge, and I would ask you to consider following the Weather Glance official Facebook page for more inside information and complimentary personal forecasts when you message me on my Facebook page. Again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.